Hey, what's good everybody? Welcome back to another video. This is going to be the last video covering the entire episode one category of my Bitwig review, but I just wanted to kind of do a little bit of recap and kind of clarify over some things that I might have either missed or been incorrect about because, well, it happens. <laughs> so without further ado, let's just go ahead and cover a few of these topics and we'll get started. So first off, if you want to change the warp preferences whenever you load in a sample, you can go and do that through the settings tab. If we look at the behavior right here, we can see that there's a default stretch mode that we can cover and set to whatever warp mode that we like. The reason why this can be important is because by nature or by default, you can notice that this is a 128 BPM loop set at an 85 BPM loop and it will automatically warp this to be in time. In theory, it's amazing, but in the actual realities of things, sometimes when you insert a sample or a loop that is faster than the host BPM, you can get some potential undesired artifacts. So sometimes you might prefer to work in a different loop mode or warp mode, and that's a neat little feature that's available to you. The next thing that I wanna talk about is the difference between grouping devices and nesting devices. So I'm just gonna pull something up from my own library and we'll pull up portal food one which sounds like this As you can tell with a crazy amount of effects and my computer is spiking. Now, if you take a look right here, you see that this everything within this is a group device. And this is saved as its own particular container within the instrument in itself. Now, the thing that we have available to us is if you look right here, there's a little arrow that you can go. And instead of throwing everything into a group, you can throw everything into a nested device instead. Now, the difference between this is if I were to save this as a preset, if I were to save it here, then that would mean that I'm saving this as an entire rack. But if I were to save this within phase plant, then that would actually make this a preset for the VST, which we would find on our presets and then my favorites or my library or XYZ. So there's a bunch of different things that you can do. So as a quick example, if I go ahead and delete this actually, because this might be a good thing to show, if I go right here into my presets and I go into my library, and I type in something like drum over compression, you'll see that there is a group on this. But if I go in, pull up a VST, like let's say Fab Filter Saturn, and I go into my presets, you'll see that I actually have a nested device of my good buddy's snare processing chain. And so it's important because, again, if you save something as a preset or as a rack, then you should be mindful of knowing the difference between the two. I also have better luck with bouncing in place with something like this as opposed to doing something in a group because there's a kind of weird chain of effects that you have to bounce out in order for that to be successful. But if we go back and I pull that up and I have something like this, I will be able to bounce in place. Now, speaking of, if I go back and actually pull that same processing chain up and I come into here and draw an F, then when I bounce this, I can bounce this in place and then all I have to do is hit Command B and this will actually, this might be new in the update, but before if I were to bounce in place a group, it wouldn't actually bounce the entire thing. But as we see here now, all the effects are there. For whatever reason, if you need to bounce something out from let's say like a group or something, so let's say I wanna pull out the side chain, and I'm like, ah, one way to do it of course is to set up a resampling channel, but the other way to do it is to actually create a clip here. Let's throw this in the side chain. And then now we right click, bounce in place, and there's my sound. One cool thing that I also omitted is that if you hold control on a Mac or Alt on a PC and you grab a MIDI clip, then you can actually bounce in place after you pull this over. So that's a great way to have that within a shortcut as well. If you have an effects group or something of that nature, basically anything that you create a clip on from whatever the routing chain goes to, you can do a resample that way. And that's a very awesome alternative to being able to freeze and or flatten tracks. So the next thing that I want to talk about that I actually forgot to mention was that within the automated parameters list right here, which is shown on this little thing, you can actually type in a search function for whatever parameter you want to find as opposed to scroll. Rolling. So if I wanted to automate the mix for whatever reason, I can find that right here. And then once I touch that, I can add in my modulator. Now keep in mind that it's whatever modulator you add, you can only modulate whatever is within the device itself. So I can't go and grab this and try to automate something like way over here. It has to be within the entire thing. Another cool thing that I ended up missing was that you can actually edit the curves of the fades. You just have to pull this out a little bit 
and then this will become available to you. If it's super thin, whenever you do that, then you're not going to be able to, but once you grab this bar here, you'll notice that the curve will pop up so you can indeed edit those fades. I wanted to kind of revisit the scrubbing functionality within a loop or a clip. Now previously I had talked about the inability to be able to have something either turn snapping on and off whenever you scrub, and I think that bug was fixed within the official 3.1 update. So if I hold command and control, then you'll see that I have a free slide, and then if I hold shift, then it will actually turn snapping on. I don't know why that feature wasn't available from before. It works for me now. I don't know but I'm glad that it's fixed. So that's pretty much it guys. This list was relatively short, but I just wanted to kind of cover over everything that was mentioned in the comment section and compile all of your guys' feedback into this video. I really appreciate you guys watching all of this stuff and kind of helping me along because I think that it's important that I don't spread any kind of misinformation to you well, to people that are trying to learn this DAW. So thank you guys for your support and thank you for staying critical of me in a respectful way. And in the next video, we will be looking at the instrument section of what Bitwig has to offer. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. Be sure to like and subscribe and all that. And if you feel so inclined, check out my Patreon and soon my brand new store that will be launching sample and preset packs. More information along the way. Thanks everyone. And I'll see you in the next part of the series.